Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, Must Love Labs. My name is Alan. On this channel, we talk about tips and tools for how to raise, breed, and sell Labrador Retrievers as quality family pets. So if you're new here, you might consider subscribing. In today's video, we're gonna do some dog breeding Q&A. This is where we answer questions that you folks have been asking on the channel. Let's get to the content. All right, let's get to some of these questions here. Uh, Danielle Schaefer's got some questions. Um, she says, um, uh, thanks for the information, and uh, what website designer should I use to advertise my puppies? Well, I've been using uh, Puppy Find, so puppyfind.com. I haven't been selling them off my own personal website. You can do that, uh, and if you go to fiverr.com, there's lots of people there that can help you design a web page. Uh, I've been using puppyfind.com. Uh, to list my puppies on, and they're getting ready to change their name, by the way. It's going to be puppies.com, and their, uh, their platform's going to change. They tell me just a little bit. I guess we'll see. Uh, I guess instead of having a bunch of emails being exchanged, it's just going to be messages on their platform. I believe that's the big switch, uh, and probably some cosmetics. We'll see how that goes. But uh, puppies.com, and for now, puppyfind.com, that's where I list my puppies. Hey, folks, if you're getting value from this video, do us a favor and hit that like button. It sure does help out quite a bit. And if you want to support our channel, we've got a Teespring store. I'll put a link in the description. You can stop by and check out a t-shirt or a hoodie. And thanks in advance for doing that. Valerie Disson had asked, um, where did you get the, the mush feeder? Um, I get them off of Amazon.com. I'll put a link in the description to this video. Uh, it'll take you right to the two pack that, that I use. Um, one for food, one for water, and that starts out with just the, the, the puppy mush. And then later when you start um, thickening it up and thickening it up, eventually you'll even get the dry kibble. You gotta put out a little water so that they got something to wash it down with, and that's where the, that's where the second one comes in. Uh, they're made stainless steel, machine washable, love them. You can use them over and over and over, they just last. I, I'm, I'm a big favorite of, uh, of um, uh, stainless, by the way. I, just, I love stainless stuff. Um, it just cleans easy and it lasts forever. But I'll put links in the description. I'll take you right to the two-pack that I use. Uh, and while we're on that, um, uh, I, I put links in the descriptions to all of our videos uh, to the pet products and tools that we use and approve of here at Must Love Labs. Uh, and if I, if I show something specifically in a video, then I try to be sure and get at least the links to those things uh, into the descriptions. So if you're ever watching one of my videos and you think, oh, you know, I like that waterer that Al's using, or I like those feeding bowls that Al's using, or the scale, uh, or you're wondering what kind of puppy food I feed my dogs, that kind of thing. Uh, check the, the description on the video. I probably put links to this stuff that'll take you right to it on Amazon. I'm an Amazon affiliate. Uh, if you guys click on those links and, and go and buy things, uh, your price doesn't change, but they kick me back a couple of pennies for sending you that way. That's how affiliate marketing works. Hope that helps. Okay, next question. Uh, Dawn's Doodles had asked, how often do you give this? Now, this is in reference to the, the puppy mush video that we did. Uh, so we're talking about puppy mush here. Uh, and if you want to know what that is, go have a look at the video. We show you how we make it and how we give it to them. Uh, but she had asked, um, uh, how often do we give it? We start them out giving it to them twice a day. And this would be in between mama's feedings. Um, twice a day, That's and, and later more, but in the beginning, twice a day. Uh, and the focus really isn't so much on frequency as it is uh, transitioning it from being basically soup, puppy kibble soup, over to being something more solid because we're going to move them towards dry kibble. Okay, Tina had asked, um, what do you recommend starting with? I'm starting with one female, but I'm torn on using a stud service for a first litter or buying my own stud straight away. Uh, and then the issue of holding one back later for a continued stud service. Uh, there's pros and cons for both. Uh, some people never own their own stud dog. They always outsource that. Uh, and some people like me uh, like, the, like the advantages of, of having a, a, a resident stud dog. Uh, and this can get challenging whenever the dogs are in heat and you don't want them to breed. So you wanna consider those issues as well. 
What I would tell you is I recommend a conservative approach. Just starting out with your female is fine and finding a good stud in, in a different kennel that's available, that, that's a great way to start. Uh, and then you can consider, uh, after that experience, you can consider how it goes uh, with you know thinking about having your own stud dog. That's what I would recommend. Find someone else's stud dog for your first litter and just focus on your female. Okay, and on the subject of, uh, of uh, the litter pan training and the pine pellets, uh, Common Girl had asked, how do you teach them that the pellets are where they go versus accidents on the floor? Uh, that's a great question. I, I can already see I'm going to need to do a, a, a litter pan training video. <laughs> uh, but um, you, you use their own mess because you're going to be in there cleaning it up anyway. So you have a litter pan sitting over there with pine pellets in it. And you take their own mess. You're going to be cleaning that up probably with a paper towel. Uh, some with a little bit of urine on it, a little bit of feces on it. Instead of just throwing it away, you put it in the litter pan, okay? And, the, and the, in this way, you use their own uh, mess to, to scent the litter pan, to, to, to get them used to going over there because they'll come back around to wherever they peed before when they get ready to pee again. And same thing when they go to poop. Um, and, and that's not overly consistent. These are puppies, but you see patterns. So uh, with their own waste, you can start to scent train them to go in the litter pan. And uh, within a couple of days, they pick up on it. It's the neatest thing. And you'll have this group of little puppies going over and using the litter pan. It's a neat thing to watch. Um, we used to use those, uh, um, those pee pads. The, the pee pads, you can get them. They're all over the place. Um, and with my Labradors, what happens is those are good for maybe a week, like between week two and week three, and that's about it. Then they start ripping them up and shredding them and just making a big, huge mess in the kennel. So you get by with about a week on those pee pads, and then that's it. They start, my dogs, Labradors, they start ripping them up. They're, they're useless at that point. Uh, you can also use those. You can take one of those, cut them into little squares, and lay them down in the litter pan because those things have uh, scent attractants in them as well that, that convince puppies to go right there. That's the whole purpose of those. Uh, so you can use their own stuff and put it in the litter pan. You can buy some of those puppy pee pads and cut them into little squares and just lay that down in the litter pan. But you're gonna scent train your puppies into going in the litter pan. And, and what you'll find is um, with a little bit of patience, um, in, in, in less than a week, most of them will get it. Uh, and you'll have your crowd of puppies using a litter pan as opposed to going all over the place in your kennel and running back and forth through it all the time, which just makes this big, huge mess. Now, the benefit to your customer down the road uh, when you go to send these puppies off to their forever home is they're, they're scent trained to use pine pellets in the litter pan. And um, so when they go to their forever home, either you can give them some pine pellets or they can go out and get their own, whatever. Uh, these people can take the pine pellets and go out into their yard to wherever it is they're wanting their dog to do its business and put them down on the ground and show them to the dog. Uh, and if there is a mess in the house, instead of just throwing it away, you no, know, you clean that up a little bit and get a little bit on a paper towel and take it out there and put it where you put the pine pellets, same thing. And, and real quick, like these dogs will catch on uh, and you can, again, scent train them to where the pine pellets and their own mess is uh, outside in the yard or in the woods or wherever it is you're going to have them doing their business. And uh, so the housebreaking goes a lot smoother. Yep. Okay, that wraps up our dog breeding Q&A session. I hope you got value from the video. If you did, do us a favor and hit that like button. And you definitely want to subscribe to the channel as we will be discussing this topic and others in the future. And thanks as always for stopping in to Must Love Labs. We'll see you in the next video.